Hey guys, I'm Android, also known as Iron Android, and then I love to talk about movies and TV shows way too much. With that in mind, join me down in the comments below, and in today's video, I'm going to be ranking all the Harry Potter movies from the worst to the best, and I would love to hear your guys' rankings in the comments down below. In eighth place, I have Harry Potter and the half Full Prince. This movie is all over the place. The story isn't that interesting except for finding out about Voldemort's past. In seventh place, I have Harry Potter and the Deathly Hallows Part 1. This movie has high stakes. Harry and his friends, Ron and Hermione, are on the search for more horcruxes. This is not the most memorable movie in the franchise, but I remember it being a lot of fun. And Dobby also sacrifices himself to save Ro Harry, Ron, and Hermione from Draco Malfoy, who got recruited by Voldemort to kill them. With Dobby getting stabbed with a knife in the process while helping the Golden Trio escape. In sixth place, I have Harry Potter and the Goblet of Fire. This movie starts out with Harry at his friend's house, and his friend's parents take them to the biggest Quidditch match of the century. Then, the Death Eaters attack the followers of Voldemort, and then Harry passes out. This is Harry's fourth year and it's the year that the Triwizard Tournament is being placed. And there is an age limit on how old you have to be to compete in this tournament. But an unknown person put Harry's name in the Goblet of Fire, which got him in trouble by Dumbledore. And now he has to compete in the tournament, even though he doesn't want to. And it divides a relationship between Ron and Harry throughout this movie. The new de defense against the dark arts teacher is Mad-Eye Moody, who has a drinking problem, but it was really Barty Crouch Jr., a Death Eater, who was drinking Polyjuice Potion to impersonate Mad-Eye Moody, who's been locked in the Castle Dunwich for the school year. The Tri-Wizard Tournament trophy took Harry and Cedric Diggory to the graveyard where one of Voldemort's followers, uh, Peter Pennegrew, uh, killed D Cedric Diggory and took Harry's blood to reanimate Voldemort back to life. In conclusion, this movie holds a special place in my heart uh, it is, as it introduced Pat Robert Pat Cedric Diggory and one of the best castings of Harry Potter of the franchise. It is in sixth place because of the fight between Harry and Ron, which is unwhelming to say the least. In fifth place, I have Harry Potter and the Order of the Phoenix. This movie starts off with Harry and his stupid little spoiled good-for-nothing cousin, Dudley Dursley, as they see a Dementor. Harry tries to save him and his cousin's life, even though he, his cousin is a little beach, but Harry has to go to wizard court for underage magic, even though he and his cousin's life were in danger which I think is BS. Harry has nightmares from the night in the graveyard where Voldemort came back to life and from uh, Cedric Diggory getting killed. The new defense against the Dark Arts teacher, Dolores Umbridge, who is the biggest turd in the Harry Potter franchise. I prefer Voldemort over Umbridge. That should tell you something. That should tell you something because I hate Umbridge with a passion. She is menacing. She gives Harry detention and literally cars I must not tell lies onto his hand. She takes over as the headmaster of Hogwarts after she tells Dumbledore to retire. She doesn't tolerate laziness. She doesn't stand for people fighting back. Before Dumbledore was forced to resign... He asked Harry to teach his army in case anything bad happens. But Umbridge finds out and shuts them the heck down. Harry and Hermione brings her to the Forbidden Forest and has Hagrid's half-giant brother, Eater. Sirius Black has a good dynamic with Harry as he is Harry's godfather. But unfortunately, his cousin Bellatrix Lestrange, who is a Voldemort follower, kills him with the unforgivable curse Arvada Kedavra. In conclusion, this movie would be 
higher on my list if it wasn't for Umbridge. In fourth place, I have Harry Potter and the Chamber of Secrets. This is a fun movie that starts off with the Dursleys tormenting Harry and locking him in his room, while Uncle Vernon has a dinner plans with his boss so he can get a promotion and he wants to make a good impression. Um, however, Dobby the house elf visits Harry in secret and tells Harry that Hogwarts is no longer safe and that he should stay home with the Dursleys. Harry gets in trouble with Uncle Vernon because he has a house elf in his house without his permission. So he puts bars onto Harry's windows. Harry's friend Ron and his brothers get his dad's flying car to rescue Harry from his prison. And unlike the Dursley, ha Ron remembers Harry's birthday. Harry learns that the Chamber of Secrets had been open this year. And the last time it was open was 50 years ago in a flash and in a flashback, it showed that Hagrid was involved. Harry, Ron, and Hermione make Polyjuice Potion to impersonate Draco Malfoy's henchman, Crab and Goyle, and disguise themselves to figure out if Draco knows anything about the chamber. In the end, we find out that Ginny Weasley had a diary with a soul of Tom Riddle inside of it, who has been possession her to open the chamber and release the basculus to kill mudbloods who are non-magic students that attend Hogwarts. All in all, this is a fun movie and you will have a great time watching it. In third place, I have Harry Potter and the Sorcerer's Stone, also known as the Philosopher's Stone in the UK. This movie is a fantastic start to the Harry Potter world. You get Harry Potter, who is an 11-year-old kid that gets his acceptance letter from Hogwarts. And Hagrid, a giant, picks him up and gets his school supplies for that year. Hagrid explains that to Harry that, I'm going to quote it, You're a wizard, Harry. The most iconic line in any Harry Potter movie. While getting his school supplies, Harry meets his Defense Against the Dark Arts teacher for that year, Professor Quirrell. Professor McGonagall leads all the students into the Grand Hall to get sorted into their houses. Ron, being a Weasley, gets sorted into Gryffindor, as well as Hermione Granger. However, the sword and hat says that Harry could do very well in Slytherin, but he begs that hat to not put him in Slytherin because he doesn't want to be with Draco Malfoy, who is a bully. So he gets put into Gryffindor. Harry has his first flying lesson with Professor, Professor Madame Hooch, but Neville Longbottom broke his arm, falling off his broom. So she takes him to the hospital wing, and Draco makes fun of him and took his flying uh, broom and his rememberal with Harry going after him to get it back for Neville. Professor McGonagall sees that Harry is flying and takes him to the Quidditch captain, Oliver Wood, to tell him that she has found him a new seeker for the team. And he is the youngest Quidditch seeker in like a thousand years uh, in history. Harry meets Professor Snape, who is the potions master at Hogwarts, and he is not a big fan of Harry because his father used to bully him in school. Harry goes on a quest to figure out who is after the sorcerer slash philosopher stone, and he finds out it was Professor Quirrell, but in his mind, he thought it was Snape. Professor Quirrell reveals that Voldemort attached himself to Quirrell and has been possessed by him to get the Sorcerer's Stone, also known as the Philosopher's Stone, so that he could reanimate Voldemort and so he can come back to life. It fails, however, and Professor Quirrell is destroyed while Voldemort escapes 
In conclusion, this is a good kickoff movie to the Harry Potter franchise. In second place, I have Harry Potter and the Prisoner of Azkaban. What do I say about this movie that hasn't already been said already? This is by far some of the best story talent and character development I have seen in any movie from the last 30 years. You get Harry Potter who blows up his crappy aunt and he threatens to use magic on the Dursleys even though he is underage. So he passes his flames and leaves on the night bus. I love how in this movie there are barely any focus on Voldemort. And in this movie, Sirius Black escapes from Azkaban prison and is after Harry. Whoops, uh, Harry's getting in trouble. Uh, the new defense against the Dark Arts teacher is Professor Lupin. And this is the only defense against the Dark Arts teacher that Harry and his friends enjoy and is not mostly evil or mean. Professor Lupin takes Harry under his wing and helps him perform a very powerful spell Expecto Patronum. Here, Ron's pet rat turns out to be Peter Pettigrew, who turns into a rat to hide that the fact that he was still alive, and he was the one who gave Voldemort the secret location where Harry and his parents were hiding from Voldemort. So Sirius Black and uh. Professor Snape were working together to kill Peter Pettigrew for betraying the Potters as he was their most loyal friend behind Lupin in Sirius. To make everybody think that he was dead, he chopped off one of his fingers, but everything went wrong when Peter escaped, with Ron getting injured during the whole incident. So Harry and Hermione ended up using a time turner to travel back in time to retrace their steps and change what went wrong. At the end, Sirius Black got his name cleared and was released from Azkaban prison. And it turns out that he is Harry's godfather, but Lupin was supposed to retire, was and was forced to retire by Dumbledore because Nobody's parents wanted a half werewolf teaching their children. This would be first if it wasn't for the next movie. And in first place, I have the best and the goatest Harry Potter movie. Harry Potter and the Deathly Hallows Part 2. This movie has really high stakes. Harry and Ron and Hermione are still on the run and to destroy Horcruxes. And they had a funeral for Dobby, who saved them from Malfoy Manor, from Bellatrice Lestrange and Draco Malfoy. And they wanted to honor that, and he would pay, pay to, played a big role for Harry. And Snape is the headmaster because he took over for Professor Dumbledore after he killed him, even though Draco was, but he couldn't go through with it. A lot of people died in this movie, including Professor Lupin, George Weasley, etc. So here, Harry decides that enough is enough and goes to the Forbidden Forest to confront Voldemort. But Voldemort uses the Avada Kedavra curse on him and kills Harry. This was a trick, though, as he didn't kill Harry but rather the piece left inside of Harry that was there when he was an infant. Voldemort killed Snape because he was the true master of the Elder Wand as he killed Dumbledore, but in his final moments, he gave Harry his memories. In reality, it was revealed that he was a Death Eater who turned good because Voldemort killed Lily Potter who was Harry's mother and he, Snape was in love with Harry mother Lily uh, but also he still has Voldemort's trust because Dumbledore made him be a double agent for him to be a good guy but also be a double agent so he can still have Voldemort's trust in case if he ever came back so he could play both parts 
And he, Dumbledore, told Snape when the time comes that he has to kill him. Uh, uh, with that being said, Harry will have to sacrifice himself to defeat Voldemort for good. It is the final showdown with Harry and Voldemort, and Harry disarms Voldemort because he is actually the true master of the Elder Wand. Since Snape killed Dumbledore, but Draco was the one who disarmed Dumbledore. Yes. And then Harry disarmed Draco, and it made him the true master of the Elder Wand. He breaks it, the Elder Wand, though, because he figures the Elder Wand was too powerful for a person to wield it. Uh, 19 years later, it's a fast forward scene, and it's our grown up people, Harry, Ron, and Hermione, as they send their kids off to Hogwarts. And Al uh, Harry's son, Albus Severus Potter, be fr becomes friends with Draco's son, Scorpius. And th that's a good relationship because of all the history uh, their parents had with each other. But in conclusion, this movie is the best in the franchise, has no downsides, and it's really my favorite personally movie, and it really holds a special place in my heart. If you haven't seen it, please go watch it. You will have a good time, but rest in peace to George Weasley as it was Fred's twin, and he played a big role in the franchise.